In 1519, Magellan set out to sail around the world. He and an astronomer friend with whom he had planned the voyage were to keep 20% of the profits made and the right to run the government of any land they discovered and conquered. This globe charts Magellan's voyage around the world. Beside it is a book of arithmetic, a hymn book, and a lute. To conquer a land, it was always necessary to convert it to Christianity. The picture was painted in 1533 by Holbein. It shows two French diplomats in London. The picture is about science, about navigation, about diplomacy, about power. But in the way that it has been painted, in the way that it has been seen, what is it most about? There is not a surface in this picture which does not denote wealth. There is not a surface which has not been elaborately and skillfully worked. Except for their faces and hands, every square inch of the canvas has been gone over numerous times by weavers, embroiderers, carpet makers, mosaic makers, leather workers, farriers, jewelers, and last of all, by Holbein the painter. They are two men convinced that the world is there to furnish their residence in it. The seafaring instruments have been placed on an eastern carpet. Without the first, the second would not be there. Implicit in the rise of European Christian culture was the destruction of other cultures. But the Europeans saw it differently. They believed that their civilization was in all respects more advanced than any other. The African kneels to hold up an oil painting to his master. The painting he is holding depicts the castle above one of the principal centers of the West African slave trade. Many works of art in other cultures and periods have celebrated wealth and power. Gods, princes, and dynasties were worshiped. But these works were static, ritualistic, hierarchic, symbolic. They celebrated a social or divine order. The European oil painting served a different kind of wealth. It glorified not a static order of things, but the ability to buy and furnish and to own. Before the invention of oil painting, medieval European painters often used gold leaf in their pictures. Afterwards, gold disappeared from their paintings and was only used for their frames. But sometimes the paintings themselves were simple demonstrations of what gold, of what money could buy. A certain kind of oil painting celebrated merchandise in a way that had never happened before in the history of art. Merchandise became the actual principal subject of these works. Eating is a pleasure, but these paintings cannot be eaten. They are a demonstration of something else. First of all, of the artist's virtuosity. Secondly, of the owner's wealth. Livestock. Not animals in their natural condition, but animals whose pedigree is emphasized and whose pedigree is a proof of their value whose pedigree emphasizes the social pedigree of their owners. They are painted like pieces of furniture, a table or chair with four legs. Objects. Objects which, significantly enough, became known as objets d'art. Houses. Buildings not considered as ideal works of architecture as in the work of some of the earlier Renaissance artists, but buildings considered as landed property. Portraits were equally important. Portraits of the owners, the owners of the paintings and the owners of much else besides.
These paintings did not directly celebrate what was buyable. They were records of the confidence of those to whom ownership brought confidence. Those who could buy banquets, horses, bulls, houses, hung on their walls generations of portraits painted to celebrate a continuity of power and worthiness. There were hundreds of thousands of such portraits, but those they depicted represented an exceedingly small fraction of the population. The poor have neither annals nor portraits. Their lives are unrecorded. But again, the style with which the average portrait was painted reveals something about the basis of this confidence and of this so-called dignity of the sitter. They were painted as though they were a strange mixture of livestock, furniture, and tailor's dummies. Every portrait is a record which says, I once existed and looked like this. These portraits say in addition, I was an object of respect and envy. I had only to raise my hand to receive attention. Everybody's clothes indicate social status. But the clothes and feathers and jewelry of these women make exaggerated claims. It is their clothes, not their faces, which dazzle. The faces of women in many European paintings are like the faces of swimmers in seas of silk and satin. Oil painting could paint these materials as they had never before been painted. There were also paintings whose subjects were taken from classical literature, subjects which today seem quite remote, unsubstantial, dreamlike. But this wasn't so when the pictures were bought. Classical mythology was part of the specialized knowledge of the privileged minority. And these paintings helped them to visualize themselves whilst displaying the classic virtues, making the classic gestures. The paintings were the settings for charades in which they themselves would play. The props were given, the spirit of the performance was left to the owner's imagination. The figures were like garments held out for the spectator owners to put their arms into and wear. Here, the daughters of the family dress up as graces decorating Hymen. But the dressing up didn't have to be as literal as that. The spectator wore the clothes and played his part just in imagination. Who would you guess she was meant to represent? Different painters see her differently. But do these paintings have anything in common? And if so, what is it that they all convey? These pictures are all from the National Gallery and are all of Mary Magdalene. The point of the original story is that a prostitute so loves Christ that she repents of her past and comes to accept the mortality of flesh and the immortality of the soul. In each case, the way the picture is painted contradicts the essence of the story. The method of painting, the way of seeing, can only envisage her as being, before everything else, takeable. The hypocrisy is sexual. The title suggests sacred love. The painting, with title as alibi, speaks of profane love. 